step-by-step -step how to set up the most attractive and effective Etsy listing. In this video, we're gonna go over literally every single thing that needs to get put into an Etsy listing before you hit that publish button. There are a lot of key elements that can make or break your Etsy listing. It's important that we pay attention to all of these things and we set ourselves up for the best case scenario when we go and enter the marketplace so that at least we know we did all that we can to be competitive. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Welcome back guys, let's just get right into the first key component of setting up your Etsy listing, and that is the photography. So we open up our listing creator here, the very first thing is photography, photos. So as you can see here, we have 10 spots to put in imagery for said item that we want to sell. Fill out all 10 spots. The subject or the main thing in the photo should obviously be your product. So nothing like this or nothing like this, where you have the potential to confuse your customers. I just want to clarify on what I mean here exactly. So for instance, this is not a good example, but just for the sake of time in this video, I'm what I'm talking about is sometimes like you'll see a listing like this, where you see all these different bracelets at this price. It's okay to do this if you have the options to buy every single thing that you see in the photo. What's not okay is sometimes you see people have listings like this, where you'll see multiple products, but actually the only thing that they're selling is this one bracelet in the middle, but you would have no way of knowing that just by seeing the main image if you didn't read the title, which most people are reading the title just looking at the picture. So if you have a listing like this, but then all you're actually selling is this one necklace or this one bracelet in the middle, that actually is gonna hurt your conversion rate and hurt waste your clicks essentially as well. But this listing is doing a good job because they give you an option to buy every single thing that you see in the picture. So if you are gonna do that, or you're gonna set up a listing that shows multiple products, you just wanna make sure that you have the option to buy every single product that they see in the image. And ideally, this listing's not doing it, but ideally also having a full set option. So having a final option that includes all the bracelets that you see in the image. And there's always gonna be a person that wants the entire thing that they see in the image, and that's likely why they clicked on it because they thought they were getting everything in the first place. Another big thing that I see is white background photography versus lifestyle photography. So an image like this versus like this. And this is absolutely huge because historically on Etsy, lifestyle imagery tends to do a lot better. It's not the case for every 100% every single product on Etsy. There's probably some best selling products that have some white background photography on there. But historically, you do actually earn the click better when your products are staged on a life background image. And this is especially important for anyone that's trying to get into the print on demand space because a lot of times these new sellers, they just wanna throw a white background on there or use the mock-up that Printify gives them. And while that might get you some sales, it's not going to reach the potential of people that it could be reaching if you actually stage it properly and make it look, you know, aesthetically pleasing. Overall, when it comes to photography, when you're about to go list your product, you're gonna wanna type in the, the keywords that you're gonna be trying to rank for, and you wanna see what your competitor's imagery looks like. And if it's if they're using professional cameras, they're not just taking it on an iPhone, you probably wanna come into the space doing professional photography as well. Now, some niches can get away with certain things that others can't. When you look at the search pages for your products, right, does your imagery stand out in comparison to your competition. And that's the imagery that you're gonna wanna test out. Now, one thing that I like to mention overall with branding, this is just a branding tip that someone gave me once. If you're somebody trying to discover your brand for the first time, one big key element to what makes a brand vibe together, because similarly, when you go to someone's Instagram page, like why all the pictures look aesthetic together is because what they're doing is they're following a color scheme. So when you look at a really trendy Instagram profile, you know, if you look closely, you'll see that they're following one color tone. If I were to pull out the color codes from all the different images and put the colors next to each other, the colors would flow together and make sense. And so you, that's kind of what you want on on your Etsy page, you want your overall brand vibe to flow and make sense together. So whether that's going for bright colors, whether that's going for neutral colors, whether that's going for soft tones, harsh tones, whatever it is, 
that's the overall brand vibe that you're going to want to chase throughout your imagery. And the same goes for your videography, which is the next option here that you have to input into your Etsy listing, which is a video. A video is super, super helpful for increasing your conversion rate, especially if your competitors don't have videos, right? This is a relatively new feature on Etsy and a lot of people aren't willing to put in the work to take a five second video. Now this, because the newness of videography on Etsy, you know, you can get away with just taking in a video with your iPhone and putting it in that placeholder, especially if much, a lot of your competition doesn't have videos. Now, if you have thousands of listings at this point, you know, one idea or one item that you could put in there is instead of maybe doing a video of the product, you could do some type of short video behind the scenes of your office, of your workspace, or something that where they can connect with you, the CEO a lot more um, and use that at, for a placeholder for all your products that you don't have videos for or you just don't have the amount of time in your day to produce a video. Maybe do a quick video montage of you know you and your workplace waving to the camera, maybe putting some subtext in there or something like that because you don't actually have the option to have sound with these videos. But you can tell a lot with just no sound and maybe just some imagery or b-roll of you showing your face as a CEO and connecting with your potential clients or customers um, that much more. Now let's talk about the next part of your Etsy listing, which is your title. But your title is comprised of something called keywords. Now in the Etsy world, if you're new to setting up Etsy listings or Etsy in general, right? One thing you have to understand is that the amount of exposure that your Etsy listings get are limited to or not so limited to uh, the amount of search volume that occurs on Etsy.com. So when you go to uh, the search bar and you type in, let's say, lip balm or something like that, or hair tie, right? Your potential to make a lot of sales or a little amount of sales is contingent on how many people are not only searching for that thing, but then also how much competition you have. So when it comes to picking your keywords, which your keywords are one of the variables of how Etsy determines where you belong in the Etsy search pages. So if you're selling a scrunchie and you put in silk scrunchie and you have that scrunchie in your title tags or description, right? Ideally, you should show up for silk scrunchies. I don't want you to get so so stressed out with keywords as far as what keywords you should be using or shouldn't be using or how much search volume compared to this keyword. All of that stuff is important to reference, but it's more important to focus on having killer photography. And when it comes to your keywords, what we're going to do is we're going to go find our best case scenario keywords based off of one, what words are even available to us. So what words are even a keyword product fit? And out of all the words that are available to us that are a keyword product fit, can we organize that list of keywords from best to worst case scenario words? And obviously the words that we put at the top of that list, those are the words that we're gonna wanna put in the beginning of our title tags and descriptions. Essentially, I'm using a tool like Sales Samurai here. What I'm gonna do to start investigating my keywords. So let's just say I'm wearing a gold necklace, right? So say I'm gonna sell a fast fashion gold necklace, right? So the first thing that I wanted to, as you can already see, I already did, I'm gonna type in a broad key term. So this gold necklace could be three millimeters thick and it could be 16 inches long. So I'm not typing in 16 inch, three millimeter thick gold necklace, right? I'm not typing in any long tail keyword. I just typed in gold necklace. So why am I typing in a just gold necklace? I'm typing in gold necklace because it's super broad. And the broader the term usually means higher search, right? When you start narrowing down key terms, you get less search volume. So we're not going to overlook smaller search key terms, but we want to start broad and then work our way in and figure out which one is, you know, the best according to a couple of different things. So I typed in gold necklace, right? And sales samurai is going to give me back estimated search monthly search volume for these words. Now, obviously I, in the ideal world <laughs> where e-commerce would be making this really fun is you would see that you would have a crazy high search volume, like 26 and then the Etsy competition was like 50. That would be insane. That would be an insane opportunity. But 
you know, we see here that the competition is actually super high. So, but 26,000 on Etsy for search volume is actually pretty high. Now you compare that to Amazon, you're talking like in the hundreds of thousands of search searches per month for certain words, right? On Etsy, Etsy, we just don't get that type of search volume yet. So 26,000 is still super high. So gold necklace is a really strong keyword. So on Sales Samurai, I can actually start making a list of the words that I want to use. So obviously, gold necklace, that's a keyword product fit if I was gonna sell a gold necklace, right? It's super broad. So I can make a list here of some of the words that I wanna save to reference back. So I'm gonna save it and hit okay. So if I had maybe in the main image, if I was showing two layered necklaces that are different sizes, that could be a good keyword product fit. We have some decent search on there. So I'm gonna heart that one as well. We'll add that to the gold necklace list. Um, we have a simple gold necklace. The way I organize this by the top search to the least search. So that's a good necklace. That's a good word as well. Simple necklaces gold. So plural, that is a good word. We're gonna heart that one. Initial gold necklace, initial gold necklace. So this, these are good KPIs to see what people are searching for for future products. But remember, if I'm just gonna launch, if I already know what I'm launching, this obviously doesn't have an initial. So that's what I mean, keyword product fit. That would not, you know, I could put that keyword into my listing but if I put it into my listing and I get clicks for it when I start running ads to it then I'm just wasting money on ads for a word that's not a keyword product fit so I'm not gonna want to put anything that's not a keyword product fit same thing for solid gold necklaces um, it's if it's not solid gold we don't want to do that let's just take out a keyword that I like my own in higher level thinking um, I'm gonna say simple gold necklace so if that is a really you know it's not the highest search volume but it it is a really strong keyword product fit so if I come in here and type in simple gold necklace let's see what other keywords get spit back to me here so as you see here, there's something called gold necklace and it looks like they forgot the E and this actually could be a legitimate amount of search volume for this and people are just typing it in wrong. So you can actually capitalize on those opportunities. So I'm going to actually heart this. I'm not going to write that in my title or my description. I don't want to have typos in my anything that's public, but this is something that I could consider putting in a tag on the back end because um, no one would actually see it. But you can see that actually has 3,300 views and um, the competition is significantly less. So like I mentioned, that's something that I would consider putting in a tag if you see something like that. And that happens in some, in some cases because people are just mistyping the word or they're clicking enter too early. So we have simple necklaces. So as you can see, we're just gonna compile as many words as possible. Some other words here that we didn't think of before, we have delicate necklace. So that's got some good search volume chain necklace so this is pretty much considered a chain there's not as much search volume but the competition is probably lower um gold filled necklace gift for her we already have that simple necklace i thought we had that one but we'll heart it again everyday necklace has decent search volume now we're gonna go to our favorites here we only added 10 yeah, 10 keywords here. Now, I would recommend finding around 13 to 20, and we're gonna try to shove these into our titles, tags, and descriptions, and obviously, we don't wanna just throw them in there. We want it to look aesthetic and like the words make sense together. We're gonna take our strongest keywords first and put those at the beginning of our titles, tags, and descriptions. So things like gold necklace. Now, gold necklace is obviously probably the strongest keyword, and go a step further is to just even narrow it down a little bit more, is to actually put the lengths of that necklace so adding a little bit more detail so if it was an 18 inch something like this then I'm dividing it by this little line here right so we have the keyword gold necklace in there we're going a little bit deeper with the size now if you offer multiple sizes I would go with the size that you think is gonna sell the most and then as you start making sales and collecting data on what actually sells the most or whether it's a color or a size or a width or whatever it is display that size in the title because obviously it's the one that's selling the most so if it's 18 inch gold necklace I'm gonna put 18 inch gold necklace we have the biggest keyword gold necklace now a big thing right now with titles Etsy really cares about the user experience of a buyer so if your title is just cl like clustered together and it, the words don't make sense to next to each other and it could become confusing to the buyer because you're just trying to 
bunch in a bunch of keywords, that actually can hurt your listing. So Etsy is kind of saying now, like really try to explain what your product is and don't overdo it with keywords. So it's like this weird balance of using data, but then also just like your own higher level thinking of like what actually makes sense and looks good from the front end. So we have the 18 inch gold necklace. We could do the gift for her, gift for her as the next one. We can go minimalist necklace minimalist necklace and maybe do one more if it was like three millimeter wide dainty necklace dainty necklace and almost just leave it as simple as that now as far as all the other keywords go i would go ahead and add those to my description and then add it in to all the other keywords into my tags which can go right here now your tags you have the option to have 13 you don't have to repeat keywords i not anymore etsy saying that you don't need to repeat them so if you can repeat parts of the word like obviously gold necklace but say i also have a 20 inch gold necklace right i will put 20 inch gold necklace i'm repeating gold necklace but i'm repeating it with the the long tail keyword put together. So I wouldn't just repeat gold necklace four times. I would put it into a longer tail word and then put it into the tags here just so it gets um, the opportunity to get picked up for that longer tail keyword as well. I'm gonna optimize the remaining, the remaining 13 tags with all the words that I didn't use. And then the same thing, I try to add them in the description as well. If you're interested, make sure you check out Sales Samurai. The link is in my description and use code Etsy if you wanna get 20% off your plan. Now now we're gonna move into the description. So copywriting here. Are descriptions important? Uh, yes, a lot of people don't read your descriptions, but it's important to essentially put any question or any potential question that somebody would ask about your product in your description, even though they're probably not gonna read it and they're gonna send you a message asking you the question, even though it's in your description anyway, totally fine for the people that do read you want to make sure that you put it in the description adding a really thorough description also protects you from any future issues that someone might have with the product that isn't really an issue they just didn't read the description so you want to make sure you cover yourself on that end so the way that i really open with my my descriptions is um you know you have an opening statement you're trying to fit in some keywords where you can where it makes sense um your opening statement you're kind of telling a little bit about the product keeping it pretty short um tell what what problem the product solves for people so if it's jewelry no need to worry with you know matching your jewelry this is the perfect piece for any outfit any occasion so far and so forth then i talk about the immediate immediately i start talking about the value proposition so this is if you have like a drop down menu i explain in the description what exists in the drop down menu or if you have personalization components to your listings you explain here exactly the information they need to know how to get their thing personalized how to submit a personalization request or where they input their personalization needs right so even though they're not going to read it <laughs> if they do it wrong you can always protect yourself and say that it was in the description then we talk about quality features so just other selling points why is your quality better than others you can add in your shipping information so even even though the shipping is in your FAQ anyway, just make sure you put in your shipping what to expect with your shipping, your processing times, even though it says it in the listing itself, I would put it there just to double protect yourself. If you have any type of warranty or guarantee for your product, I would also add that here. And then lastly, I would say your care instructions. If you do have care instructions for your items, I would add that in there as well. The big thing is your price point. So what price point you should be selling out. I have a whole video dedicated to understanding how to set up your price effectively, but just to give you a little bit of a crash course here, your price is there's no perfect formula for setting up your price. Your price should solely be contingent on who is your actual customer avatar or who you, what type of customer avatar you want to attract. So jewelry is a really good example of that, right? There's people that sell fast fashion jewelry for a cheap price and it then becomes that the perception of that said jewelry is cheaper jewelry. They're selling at a higher price point thus attracting a higher quality, I guess you could say customer avatar who are willing to spend more money at a, a higher price, right? But it, there's no wrong answer, it's just contingent on what customer that you want. My best advice is try to define that before you go to market. And once you define, you know, who is my customer avatar, what type of customer do I wanna attract, 
Then you want to go to the marketplace and see what other people are price points they're selling at. So if I come into Sales Samurai here again and I go into that basic search tool again and I scroll down to looking at what listings are getting the top views for maybe that keyword that I want to go after, we're going to see which guy is getting the most views and at what price. So as you can see here, we got $30, 30, 53, $57. So for whatever reason, this guy is getting the most views at this price. Now this guy is solid gold, that's why it's so much more expensive, but you can see anywhere from the 30 to like the $60 range here seems to be what is getting the most views for this simple gold necklace keyword. So you would wanna use that as a KPI as you know, price range that we're probably gonna to want to deal with. You can see that both of those are working, right? So there's really no wrong answer, it's just you don't wanna be this anomaly figure where your price is way too low at $10 and now you just depleted the perception of quality, but you also don't wanna be $116 but and not be solid gold, right? If you're gonna be priced that high, you need a justification for why it should be priced that high. So is it the justification? In that case, is because it's actually solid gold, right? Price becomes more important if you're competing on price, but jewelry is not really one of those niches that technically compete on price. People really want what they want when it comes to jewelry. It's more about the marketing aspect and really creating that perception of an awesome product versus if you're selling you know, stickers or something like that or B2B business supplies. Well, let's talk about shipping, whether it's free shipping or non-free shipping. So before the talk of the town was offer free shipping, offer free shipping, Etsy's gonna favor you if you can offer free shipping. And you know, this is true or it was true, is still kind of true in some sense, but in some cases, in some niches, having shipping for free actually can not benefit your listing if you're in a super price competitive niche. So like we mentioned before, if you're selling business to business and you're selling packaging supplies, I'm a business owner looking to buy you know, mailers for, to package my items, right? I wanna cut my costs as low as I can, right? So. When I see, uh, if I go on Etsy and I type in, you know, thank you cards or something like that, right? I'm looking for a cheap price. And one way to showcase that cheap price is not by not offering free shipping on the front end. And so now when I go to the Etsy search pages and I type in, you know, Etsy thank you card, I'm looking for that cheapest price, right? And I'm gonna click on the listing that has the cheapest price and obviously, cheap price, but also most aesthetic to what I'm looking for. By default, that listing just earned my click because they're showing a cheaper price on the front end because they don't include free shipping. They're actually gonna charge me for shipping on the back end, but by then the listing had already sold me because I clicked on it. And I'm not saying that's the case 100% of the time, but the hardest part about all of this is earning that click. So again, that's something that you're gonna want to research before and see, you know, what is my niche? Does my niche, do all my competitors offer free shipping or is it a hybrid Do half of them offer free shipping and half of them don't? Or is it super, super price competitive where everyone is not offering free shipping because they want to be able to show the cheapest price on the front end. Like I said, in some cases it can help you, in some cases it can't, or in some cases it's subject to test. So you just have to see which converts better for you. And you can set up two listings, one with free shipping and one with non-free shipping, and see which one gets a higher click-through rate followed by which one actually makes you the most money. You might get one or two people reaching out asking why the price is different, and then you'll just explain, actually it ends up costing you about the same because one is free shipping and one does not. Guys, thank you so much for staying till the end. My name is Hannah Gardner. I teach people how to build brands mainly on Etsy and Shopify, but a lot of entrepreneurial stuff as well. So if that is what you're into, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna check out Sales Samurai, I have a link in my description. And if you wanna get 20% off, you're gonna to wanna to use code Etsy. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.